Hi there, I'm Ben, and welcome to part six of my full platinum walkthrough for Elden Ring. We are in exactly the same place we just left at the, at the end of episode five. We are at Godric's death. You can see there's the guy from the beginning of uh, the castle there, the one I talked about that has a whole storyline going on. Uh, we'll see him in a moment. You don't have to speak to him or anything, but he is doing something quite funny. Anyway, well, kind of funny. It's also pretty sick. Uh, we're going to go back to the very start of the game again. We're going to go to Stranded Graveyard, and we're going to just quickly go and get a Golden Seed by defeating the Ulcerated Tree Spirit. If you've seen these before, this boss, uh, we did briefly see one in the previous video in Stormvale Castle. We ran past it. Uh, we're going to defeat this one. Now, these enemies, these bosses, are one of the worst in the game or were when I first started the game. They, they are horrendous when you first start the game because you don't know what's going on. Uh, by the way, I'm, you know where I am. We've been here before. Uh, I'm running all the way down. Uh, the chariot is not here anymore because we destroyed it. So we can just quickly run all the way to the bottom, take the same route that we have done previously, and instead of going right up the hill, we're going to go left down the hill. Uh, I will just say make sure you're ready for the fight before going in. Because uh, as you go down here, you're going to see there's going to be a lot of um, of spirits appear. Uh, so be aware of that. Just keep running and just go straight through the boss fog. You are going to get a uh, stake of Marika along the way. There is one just before the boss fog. So don't worry if you do die. You can just keep repeating the boss over and over again. You don't need to do this whole run again. It's uh, here just on the side as we enter. See, there's one behind me already. So as we go through the fog here... You've got one of these things in front of you. Now, usually it will do the sort of dash towards you. These look horrendous. There's so much movement going on in this creature, but most of it doesn't actually hurt you. Obviously, the tail swipe is going to hurt you. Uh, you're obviously going to want to bring in a summon. But wait, this is what it will usually do. It will usually do, usually do the grab uh, with its mouth. It will dash away a bit, do another grab with its mouth, and then it will do this breathing fire. If you stay, or like lightning fire, if you stay to the right hand side of it as it does that breathing lightning fire, uh, you'll have more than enough time to uh, bring your summon in. So yeah, that will, more often than not, that will be what it does first. And then yeah, hopefully if you get the tail swipe, that's actually quite a good one, it's easy to dodge. Uh, like I said, most of the movement this thing does, doesn't hurt you. Uh, it looks a lot worse than it actually is. Now I've got it staggered. Uh, you do want to be quite far away from it because about halfway through it will do this. You can see there's sort of a path where the, the kind of fire, lightning fire goes. Uh, see, it's a lot of movement that doesn't actually hurt you. Obviously it's just the, uh, the tail swipes and the hand swipes that you need to watch out for. So just kind of sit back with this one a bit almost and read its moves. Uh, don't be dodging all over the place. It's not going to do you any good. And uh, yeah, just keep your distance and uh, you should be okay. We're powerful enough to defeat these things at this point. So we came here, we got the banished uh, Knight Oleg's Ashes as well. But what, what we actually came for was the Golden Seed. And uh, obviously we got a few uh, runes out of it as well. So not too bad. Next we're going to Stormhill Shack. So this video is going to be a bit of a clean up. Uh, eventually we are going to Luernia, Luernia, something like that, uh, of the lakes. We're doing the southern area of that. Uh, Stormhill Shack, speak to this uh, this girl again. I'm going to call her Roddy. I think it's Rod Rodarina or something like that. Uh, she does say her name, but I've cut it out. Uh, speak to her. You're going to show her the, the thing that we got, the memento that we got in the castle. Uh, now, if, if you've gone too far in the game, she will actually disappear and be here anyway in Roundtable Hold. Uh, but once you've spoken to her, go to Roundtable Hold. Exhaust her dialogue in both instances, of course. Uh, and in this second instance, she will give you a golden seed. Now, if she doesn't do this, uh, go back to the shack. It means you may have gone a bit too far. Uh, the golden seed will be there. So either way. And she's going to be able to strengthen our summoning ashes next. That's what she's here for. So uh, she's quite important, to be honest. And this is the uh, this is Nephelia Lou. Nephelia? Nef yep. That one that helped us with Godric. If you speak to her, you're going to get an Arsenal charm. It's not a charm we'll ever use. It just increases your equip load. Uh, we already have Erdtree's Favour, which is doing that for us. Not that we need it. We're, we should be running quite light. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm going to speak to the uh, the smith here. So exhaust your dialogue with Roddy. Um, come over here and speak to uh, the smith again. And there'll be an option about the girl. 
the meaning her. So speak to him about her. Upgrade your gear while you're here, your sword. Keep going with that one. They do go up to plus 25, if you're wondering. We're at plus 8 at this point. Uh, and then go back to speak and... I think Roderica, I'm sure it's that. Something like that. Um, speak to her again and say what the smith has said, basically. So you're going to get that option will come up and say, tell her about what the smith has said. Uh, and then... Um, there you go, what the blacksmith said. And then obviously exhaust the dialogue again. And then in the future, she's actually going to move into the same room as the uh, the smith. And she'll be able to upgrade our ashes for us, which means we are going to be able to finally use our grave and ghost glove wart. And then after that, we're going to go back to Godric and actually go to the namesake of this uh, and this video. We're going to go to the lakes. Uh, they <laughs> yeah, I said it's funny. It's kind of not. But he's the guy from the beginning of the castle uh, stamping on the head of... Godric, the golden, or is he the golden? Godric, no, the grafted, sorry, <laughs> Godric the grafted, um, yeah, and there's a whole thing going on story-wise with him and the cra and the throne here, uh, we're not going to do that, it's not needed for any trophies or anything, so uh, we'll leave that, but uh, yeah, make your way down here, and then to room, nothing in here. There's no enemies. There's an item down here. It's called a sh <laughs> Shabriri Grape. Um, I'll show you who you give these to. Uh, there's a woman outside in a moment. Uh, I'm not going to give it to her. That's a weird thing to say. I'm not going to give her the grape. Uh, <laughs> um, because we're not going to find them all and we're not going to follow her quest line. There's quite a few and then you, you give her all the grapes. and then Yeah, we don't need to do it. So we're not going to. It's her that, on the right hand side there. But uh, she's blind, and the grapes give her powers, apparently. Uh, so quickly, just light the, uh, the um, grace point there, and then we're just going to go down to this church and grab a sacred tear. If it is daytime and it's bright out, and it's you can see out into the distance, it's quite the view when you, you come out of that, uh, that cave there, or the, uh, the building. Sacred tear, this is he's a failed magician, that guy. I'm not a magician, um, sorcerer. So... <sighs> He sells some spells, but they're really bad. Uh, there's not much point talking to him, really. So we're just going to uh, to leave him. Basically, he's there to tell you about the key to get into Rail Aquaria, which we are um, we're going to do. You can give him the key afterwards, but there's also no need to do that. So we should have enough golden seeds to now upgrade our flask with regards to charges, and we can also upgrade it with regards to how much it replenishes. I'm going to stick to two to th six at this point. Um, you may want to, to go more on the red than the blue. It's up to you. It depends if you're struggling with getting hit. Uh, and again, we're going to be going intelligence. We are going to be getting our new staff at the end of the next video. We'll be ready to get it at the end of the next video. Uh, but intelligence-wise, we probably won't be there just yet. Plus upgrades. Uh, so here, he, the Bok will be back if you've been following his storyline. Uh, exhaust his dialogue. Uh, go through his audio, his audio, his dialogue options, and then um, he will now be your your uh, your go-to if you want to alter your gear. It's 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 cosmetic. Uh, I was going to say it's purely cosmetic. It's actually not. There are some uh, changes to the law on the new pieces of of gear. So if you're into all of that, obviously this isn't really the video series for you. We're just getting the platinum, but uh, that's what the the alterations can do. He'll make them for free. I'm just going to run into this graveyard on the way down. I just brought up the map of where the map is. Uh, so, yeah. is a <laughs> You think this game is big. You keep opening up. I've said this before. Opening up areas. And then it just keeps surprising you how large this game actually is. I think it's... Compared to a lot of games like Assassin's Creed and things like that. It's not that large. But if you compare it to Souls games, Bloodborne. Uh, it's huge. <laughs> it's, it's absolutely enormous. So, Aca uh, Academy Scroll there. We can give that to Sela next time we see her and she'll have some more spells available for us. Uh, not that we will be using any of them or purchase them, but uh, just in case you want to. Uh, this camp here, I'm just going to completely skip. <laughs> I can't be bothered with it. There's nothing in there we need. Uh, we just want to get past it. This is a, this video is a bit... It seems like it's a bit all over the place, but we do actually get quite a lot done. And then we're going to head north we're heading north along there's, there's almost a path here you can just see there's a wall but it, we are going into the lakes now and it is all flooded so that's that's where we are now 
Uh, we will be picking up the map. It's there. We'll be doing it in a moment. I'll start using markers as well. There is a merchant here. We're not going to buy anything from him. Uh, he does have the lantern. If you fail to buy that, you can uh, buy the lantern from this guy. There's some smithing stones in case you need those as well. Cookbook. Uh, no, nothing we'd use. Crystal darts, things like that. Arrows. Nothing we'd ever use, to be honest. Right, we're going to head north along the kind of path road here uh, and grab the, the map. So there's some enemies around the map, and usually I can just kind of hit them a bit as I ride past and uh, just jump off and, you know, shoot a few um, pebbles their way and they'll be dead. But they nearly kill me. That, that was horrendous. <laughs> I had no... I'd, it's not. I'd never been like that. They've never been that aggressive before. Um, but, yeah, I got two with the, the rock because... Yeah, it's good for multiple enemies. It is slow, but uh, if, you, if you've been groups like that, then it, it can be good. So, yeah, just watch out. They're, they're always here. I've never had a problem with them, with them in the past. They've been quite docile. docile. Um, but, yeah, this time. So, this is the yeah, This is only a small portion. It says east. It says lakes east, but I'm, I'm counting it as south, really. Uh, I know it's not. It's, it's the eastern side, but there is a west. There is a north. Uh, but it's kind of the southern part as well. So I've marked on the map. Now I'm going to start using these markers. You should use them too. Uh, just another where another grace grace point is. Excuse me. Um, and then we're just going to mark this grace point so we can use it later on. Uh, that's all. So the actual where I've marked is uh, the tombs we're going to go to or kind of ruins we're going to later on. But just in front of it is a grace point. Uh, a habit you'll want to get into as well is uh, there's a glintstone cookbook. Again, we'll probably never craft anything from it. Is to delete your markers. Uh, if you've got somewhere and you don't need the marker anymore, delete it or walk into it uh, and it'll disappear uh, because you don't want them everywhere because it's it's horrendous on because they're always going to be on your uh, on your compass at the top and it just looks horrible and you can lose them especially when we've got the whole map opened up. You can lose where you actually put them. Uh, it can be quite annoying. So, um, yeah, delete them. And now we're going to head just back along the wall, kind of the way we came. I'll show you with the map. I'll always be bringing the map up when I'm in big areas like this, so you know where I'm going. We're heading just south to, uh, against the wall now, and we're going to do a quick uh, jail fight. So this is where I am now. I used the spirit spring just south and jumped up, and this is the jail we're going to do. Uh, Adan, Thief of Fire, he is uh, basically an NPC fight. Uh, he's, he's not too bad. He might catch you off guard now and again. But he because he is an NPC, he does try and run at you all the time. So, uh, yeah, you're not going to have too much casting room with Rock Sling. But it is one of the better spells to use. Uh, Ambush Shard can be good as well. Obviously, it's quicker. Um, and they don't dodge it. So it's actually really good against NPCs because they don't ever try and dodge it because they don't know it's coming but uh, yeah I'll uh, kind of stick with Rock Sling to be honest uh, he doesn't give you many like that's not a good opening that was terrible timing but uh, if it's because you can get the stagger that's why I like it if you stagger them with it then uh, it gives you plenty of time to refill and just once you get the one stagger you can just keep spamming and it gives you that, that window you need because he is an NPC he will heal just the once he can only do it once uh, the reason we're doing this, by the way, is for the spell, Flame of the Fell God. It is a legendary spell that we need for the trophy, the spell trophy. So uh, that's why we're here. It's a nice quick one. Do we get the kill? No, we do not. What do we do with this one, though? We haven't done the roll. Uh, there we go. So it's fairly straightforward. There is a st uh, Stake America, so if you do die, you can just keep coming back. And the Flame of the Fell God, obviously this is an Everjail, so you can't bring in summons. So that's uh, one of the spells down. And then we're going to head uh, north. It's kind of north, west, north. It's mainly north. Uh, along this grass bit because it's the easiest way to... Uh, we're on the hill at this point. The lake is below us. We'll get down to it in a moment. This is the easiest way to track where we're actually going. So just head north. And then we're going... The reason I'm staying to the side here, we do have to go into the rock formation in a moment. So that's where we're heading along there. 
there are the, the little enemies in here. I'm going to miss them. You're going to see one of them throw there. It's like a smoke bomb. It doesn't hurt. It just loads of smoke everywhere. Just run past them all. Ignore them. <laughs> and uh, head towards this camp. And when you see this camp at the bottom, you'll see this rock formation sticking out. That is roughly, well, it's not roughly. It's exactly where we need to be. So drop down. And then go back on yourself a bit. And then just hidden here is a cave. Now this isn't 100% essential, this cave. Uh, we're basically going through this cave to get, so this is where I've come down, along here. So it's, it's northwest, isn't it? It's not really north, but it feels like north. Um, this cave is not essential, but there is a, a side quest. We're basically trying to get to the other side of the cave, uh, and there's a woman there we could speak to, and there's a whole side quest with her, and it's an easy, somber, ancient dragon smithing stone, the, be the top smithing stone. So I'm going to give you a few options. We'll get a few of them. Uh, so you can, if you wanted to, upgrade a few of your weapons to the top. And uh, yeah, this is the cave. It's an easy cave, this one, to be honest. It is an easy cave, this one. Uh, mainly demi-humans and crystal snails. <laughs> uh, this is uh, quite an annoying one. Yeah, so when they do the red eyes, as in uh, past Souls games, uh, it's obviously more dangerous. It's rage kind of thing. Uh, so kill them quickly. Don't get hit. So I'm just going up the cliff edge here slightly. There's a few here you want to just kill. I know it is dark. I do apologize. There's not much I can do about it. But uh, if you stay along the top, there's going to be three here around this fire. Hefty beast bone times three. I mean, who cares really? <laughs> uh, we're never going to use those. And then there's a f another one. Is it one? Yeah, there's one here. And then there's one in inside the tunnel. It is one of the larger ones, so do watch out. And we're going to go and get the Spear Talisman. So yeah, watch out as you come in here, because there is one of the uh, the bigger Demi-Humans, the Chiefs, in here. So try and clear the room. Obviously, it, whenever you're in the dark, always be locking on uh, to see if there are enemies, because you can't see. Like, I couldn't see him. I had no idea he was there. But because we can just kill them from a distance, no need to actually see them. Just keep locking on. You see the, the, the uh, Chief is here, so just keep firing. Do not uh, let off, and you should kill him easy, easy enough. It's not a boss fight or anything, but uh, yeah, there we go. So there's loads of things, loads of fireflies and cave moss and all sorts. Pick all that crap up as well. <laughs> uh, but the thing we're here for is spear talisman. Well, we're not here for it. We don't need it. But uh, if you do want to use a spear, then the talisman here is going to make it better. And now we'll actually continue on with the cave. Just a little detour there. It's still weird to jump in a Souls game. <laughs> On command, anyway, like this. Right, there is a drop... Whoa, be careful. Um, there's a drop down here. This is where we're going. So drop down one, and then to the left. Cave Moss. We do actually potentially need that in the future. And then keep dropping down. Now we've got snails, crystals. So they, they're harmless, harmless enough, these snails. It's really annoying when you get that close to killing an enemy. That's like one more point in intelligence that would two-shot them. I have to waste an extra shot on each one. So there's three snails in this first cave. Uh, what they do mainly is uh, shoot magic at you and jump at you. And they are pretty harmless, to be honest. I mean, if, they, if there's a, a big group of them or you get stuck or something, maybe you'll die or get hurt at least. But yeah, you should be fine against them. So there is a big group here. They're all sleeping. To be honest, if you don't want a gold room 5, you can run straight past them. But uh, I know you're going to kill them. Because it's kind of have to, don't you? <laughs> Anything you come across, you kind of have to kill them. Extra one there. It's a bit naughty, but they don't... Yeah, they're not like cute snails or anything like that. They uh they will try and kill you. Now we've got another drop down, so be careful on this one. This place might look a bit familiar if you have played Dark Souls 1. There's definitely some inspiration taken there. Some soft cotton. Uh, it's a crafting material. We don't need it. Smithing Stone 4 here. Quickly pick that up there. Number one, uh, Just one of them. So we will be moving on to 4 pretty soon. 
So there, that's what they do. The magic. I mean, it, I, it couldn't even reach me. It just hit the floor in front of me. <laughs> and then they do that leap now and again, but, I mean, you'll be fine. You should be fine. And then we're going into the boss. Uh, this is Bloodhound Knight. They are not particularly good for us as uh, sorcerers because they're fast and they're uh, oppressive and they're on top of you the whole time. So, uh, yeah, bring a summon in to help. Uh, be aware that he does change, unlike a lot of bosses, he changes back to you quite a lot. It may look like he's completely ignoring you, but then all of a sudden he's there. So uh, do watch out and just wait for the attention to go away again. It did not there, that was a terrible dodge. There we go, go on, take over. And then you should be able to get rid of him pretty quickly if the uh, attention isn't on you. Lucky there. And there, easy enough. Uh, Cerulean Amber Medallion. It's not one we will use. It kind of does fit with what we're doing, but it's just not better than anything we're using. It boosts our FP, but we already have the, uh, the Scar Seal, Soul Seal uh, doing that, so we don't want to replace that. Uh, so this is a lady that I cannot remember her name, but yeah, speak to her. <laughs> we're going to come back and see her in a moment. Uh, so we're going to get a rune arc. This is our first rune arc. You may already have one if you got one from a rat. But I, I thought to myself, I won't go and do uh, our first rune until we have a rune arc. We now have one, so we'll go and do that. So make sure you uh, do the grace points so you can come back here easily enough. We will be back to speak to her in a moment. I was going to carry on and do it at the end, but we'll do. Um, we'll go and do the rune now. So if you go back to Limgrave Tower Bridge, so this is the bridge that we ran to in the previous episode. You remember the big lion that was guarding it? That's where we are now. So we're just going to run across Bolt Drake Talisman. That helps against uh, lightning. Not particularly common, mostly with Draman. Dra uh, Dramans? What the hell's a Draman? Dragon. Right, we've got three giants on this bridge. They are extremely simple. Uh, be quick. Aim for the bottom, their ankles. One, two, three. It's about three or four usually. Uh, will drop as soon as they drop. Lock off and then run into their chest and do R1 to do a, a kind of a, a repost. It's not really a repost, is it? Uh, a critical hit. Uh, you should be able to kill them in, in one hit of that. And then stand behind this one here, this, this clump of uh, statue, because there is one you can see them in the distance with a bow and arrow. Uh, and you should be okay. So I'm just waiting for them to fire. There we go. And clear. Run in. Get the critical. And then get ready to move. I couldn't lock on. I'm, I tried to lock on then. And the, the camera moves. Obviously, if you don't hit lock on properly, it centers your, your camera instead. Uh, so I couldn't get it there. And uh, obviously, I got hit by the arrow. So just head towards him. As long as you put something between you, you'll be fine. He does have that in the way, so it's a bit annoying. We have to get a bit closer. Uh, don't get close like that, because that will happen. <laughs> that was uh, that was stupid. But yeah, this one strangely doesn't drop. Uh, I'm not sure why at all. Usually they do uh, one or two hits, especially the ones with the bow and arrow, the archers. But no, he's standing strong. You're going to make me use some more of my FP here, aren't you? There we go. Right, and then we're going to go and do the Great Rune. So this is the tower. You'll see them on the map. You can't really see them clearly on the map yet. But they all lead into a central lake or area that we can't actually go into. There's a cert You can see them all dotted around those towers. Each um, shard bearer. Uh, has a great rune, or some others have great runes as well. Uh, and when you have, when you get a great rune, it's not actually active until you go to a one of these towers and activate it. They each have their own one. This is Godric's great rune tower. They're all the same. You just need to go across a long bridge and, and top of the tower and interact with it. I'm going to skip this elevator because it goes on forever. And uh, yeah, and then you activate it. This. Now, I'm not going to ever use a Great Rune. I, ha I still have I've used it once. I've used a Great Rune once. 
Now the problem is rune arcs are quite rare. You will find quite a few through you play through. If you go through everything, you'll probably find 40, 50 of them quite easily. Um, and you can farm them from rats and things like that. But it's one of those items that you think, ah, we'll do, I'll just I'll save it for later, and then you never end up using it. But I'm going to not use them for another reason. So we do need to come up here and get it anyway, because we're going to get the great rune trophy. Uh, so what it does now is I will I will activate it, and you can use it if you want to. I'm not going to for the main reason that I can't guarantee that you will have any rune arcs or uh, will be using them. So I don't want to use it for that that reason. I can't guarantee that you'll be able to use them at the same time. So what that does is you equip it here. You can change the great runes when you have more of them. But when you to activate it, you need to crack a, a rune arc. Use it. It's a one-off. And then this great rune in particular will do plus five on all of your attributes. All of your attributes will go up by five points. It's like 40 levels in one go. It's insane. Um... But you die, it goes away again. So you can't rely on it, and I can't rely on it either, because, you know, you might die, I might die. Uh, so, yeah, I'm not going to rely on them, but if you want to use them, go for it. Honestly, I would save them for a boss you were struggling with. You can, you know, you're struggling, do a backup save or something, pop a rune arc, uh, and it's going to obviously make you stronger. And then uh, if you do die again, you can always go back, to, back on your save and... Uh, yeah, but I'm not going to use them because I can't guarantee you will have them. Uh, glass shard there, I mean, who cares, but it, I did pick it up on the way. Uh, so I have put another marker down. This is for a, another uh, grace point. I'm just going to mark it for now. We will be back to it. So we're heading north. There is a road you can't quite see yet. It is all crumbled down It's um, into the lake. Now, the main thing with the lake, this lake, is watch out for the lobsters. And I was thinking that the whole time as I'm riding down here, I'm thinking, watch out for lobsters. Don't hit any lobsters. We don't want to see any lobsters. I cannot be bothered with them. I don't want them in the video. <laughs> I don't want to have to deal with them. Uh, and then I ride right over the top of one. Where is he? See, I still can't see it. He's there right ahead of me. He's seeing that lump. That's a lobster. There's another one to my left as well. I ride right over the top of it. Now, the reason you don't want to deal with lobsters, the grace point's actually to the left, but I decided to go right and hide on the bridge, is that. That shot the lobsters do, they will hit you from such an insane distance. It's not even fair. Look how far away he is. And they're deadly accurate as well. So I'm just hiding here till the lobster diagros, because you can't outrun them. You, you just can't. It's not possible. Uh, it will kill you in uh, luckily two shots, but um, yeah, avoid the lobsters if you can. Do a better version, a uh, better way than I do. These guys are just funny. I don't, I don't get it. Why are they doing <laughs> cartwheels towards me? I'm not sure. They're they're, they're odd looking things. If you've seen, um, oh, what's that film? A razor head. They look like the baby from a razor head. I wonder if that's where the inspiration came from. Uh, they're terrifying, to be honest, but goofy at the same time. Anyway, the lobster's diagroed. I'm clear now. Uh, I'm going to just head to this grace point. Uh, so I was a bit off with my marking on the map, but it got us in the general direction. And uh, there is a map here as well, so I can now show you where we are. We are technically, it says Luonia North, but I mean, I suppose it is. So this is where we've come, this is where we are now, and I'm just going to pop this uh, this grace point. We will use this shortly, we're just going to go elsewhere for a moment, and uh, pick something else up. Do I have any levels in me? No, I don't think I have, I'm just resetting. So now we're going to go back south again, uh, we're going to go back to this cave, Lakeside Crystal Cave, we're just using it to get to the location. And then we're going to ride to the left, or the west, northwest, and follow the wall along. So there is obviously a lot of this lake we're missing out, because uh, we just don't need to do it. It's so huge, it would take hours to go around it. The first time I played this game, I looked through everything, and it's like 110, 120 hours. Hopefully this guide will be around 25, so that kind of says how much we're missing. Um... This, there is a, it is a negative of this game, I would say, is there's a lot of open area where there is actually nothing, which I really don't like in games. That's why I've always liked the Souls games so much, because it was just condensed and straight to the point. 
but uh, there is also a lot of stuff in most of the areas right keep the wall on your left you're going to be finding this poison swamp you can ride through it on torrent of course because he is uh, immune to any sort of poison or anything there is a crystal lizard here I yes I'm calling them crystal lizards. I know they're not scarab tears scarab tears or something scared tears scarabs I don't know is what they're actually called but there is an ash of war there if you want it it's not one uh, I'll use but it's just on the way uh, watch out for the crabs obviously they pretty much leave you alone uh, now the on the map you can we don't have the map for this area yet but there is actually another area above us which we go to later on so this isn't really marked well on the map this place but uh yeah we're here gone through the opposite so this is where I am I've just kept kept the wall on my left and gone underneath the other area and uh, this is called village of I've got to wait for it to come up because uh, yeah Albinorix Albinorix that word there that's where we are kind of reminds me a bit of um, blight town there's not much there's no dangerous drops or anything like that but we are in a dark area it kind of looks a bit like it uh, there's a swamp off to the side below us but uh, it's nowhere near as bad so I am killing these things they look innocent enough but don't be fooled by them just kill them all as you as you see them they do run at you uh, screaming and you know just get rid of them <laughs> there's a pile of them here on the floor there is a larval tear that's why we're getting these uh, level tier we're going to be able to use uh, yeah at the end of the next video it's we're going to be able to restack uh, restat if you want to if you want to completely re-roll and do everything again you can with a level tier so we have two of them at this point and then there's a grace point ahead And then we're going to walk up the hill in a moment. Hang on a minute. We've just got to sit down and refresh. Uh, walk up the hill. It is dark, obviously. But if you just look, there's a tree at the top. And there's an enemy underneath the tree. I've locked onto him. Kill him from a distance. He is quite aggressive. Just uh, a couple of um, rock slings should do it. Two or three will do it. There's another lily here. Nothing we'll ever use. But it is a you know, crafting material. Uh, don't hit that pot. Don't hit it. Uh, just uh, there's a sickle here as a weapon. I, yeah, I mean, if you want it, it's there. Uh, but roll into this pot. This is why we're here. There's a little guy in here. Uh, he is one of the Albuanic people. Yeah, that word that we saw earlier. Uh, yeah, and he's going to give you half of the Halic Tree Secret Medallion. And that's what we came for. Uh, he's actually connected to that woman that uh, was lying on the wolf earlier on. So we'll go and see her shortly because uh, yeah, uh, there is a whole side quest with her that we may finish off. Not 100% sure we will, but I'll give you the option. So yeah, we need that because Halig Tree is a secret area. It's not, well, I suppose it is secret. It is actually quite a secret area um, where the hardest boss in the game is. And um, yeah, we need the second half, which is a lot further on. But uh, we have the first half. So I did bring my summon in here. here. Hopefully, I was hoping he would uh, uh, teleport across and take the attention of the casting one there. Because there are quite a few of them lying on the floor. But um, he didn't. But I got him in the end with rock throw. He will disappear here. Because there's a little break. It's a bit stupid, really. A little break in the uh, way you can actually summon him. And then it continues again on the other side. It's going to come straight back again because there is a boss. We're literally here just to fight a boss because um, it's uh, it's a couple of minutes and uh, it's like 5,000 runes, so why not? Uh, you do not need to bring in your summon for this one because he is not difficult, but you may want to because there are three or four dogs down there and he will take uh, divert. They will divert his their attention on him. Jesus, that was difficult to say. Their attention on him. So he is. It does. Omen killer is the the enemy. Reminds me a lot of um, Capra Demon from Dark Souls One. It's that similar thing. You can see him running towards me there. 
uh, he's dead already. But yeah, <laughs> has dogs around him um, and has two big axe blade things. Uh, reminds me of Capra Demon. Nowhere near as difficult though because we've got loads of room to mess around in. Uh, Crucible, not Talisman there. That reduces damage from um, headshots. I mean, when are you ever going to use that, really? I don't know. <laughs> but we're here for the rune arc, which is here, and uh, some extra runes. So that's why we just did that. And now we're going to go back to Latena. That's her name. I can now tell you what it is because I can see it. She's the one with the wolf. Uh, go through all the dialogue options. You're going to speak to her. She's going to be quite standoffish, to be honest. Uh, and then show her the medallion you just got from that guy in the jar. Uh, and then there's going to that's going to activate her side quest now. So go through all of her dialogue options. Keep going through all of it, and then accept. Say hear her, her hear her out, hear her request, and then keep going all the way through her dialogue. It does take quite a while, and then eventually she will disappear and uh, become a uh, summon an ash. So you can summon her. She's not particularly very good because she is an archer. She she doesn't do the one thing, the main thing we need from summons, which is. Uh, take the attention of the enemies she just stands in the back shooting arrows and she's not particularly very strong but we may may or may not i've not decided yet use her to get an ancient somber dragon smithing stone thing <laughs> uh, but yeah the option will be there for us later on because you can miss her ashes uh right we are just marked off that forest just off to the northeast there i'm just going to ride up there and get some uh, smithing stone three there's three of them quite easy to get uh, can take a while though. It is one of the big flower things, but it, they are uh, a lot tougher. It's the one of those, but in large form. There are a few of those in the lake as well. Obviously, watch out for lobsters. Keep your distance from the lobsters, for the love of God. <laughs> uh, yeah, ride into the forest and look for the, the group of flowers. And then, uh, yeah. Be ready to dodge or hide behind a tree. Quite tight, close behind a tree if you do hide behind it. But it, you can see there's a lot of uh, magic coming your way. Fairly easy to dodge as long as you go sideways. And then look how much damage this thing doesn't take. It's going to take a while. The main thing is our stamina is dropping quite quickly. Uh, obviously, you don't really want to get close because of the whole poison cloud thing. Uh, I'm pretty sure this thing will be weak to fire, but we aren't using incantations because uh, historically anything that is based within a sort of the plant world in these games is weak to fire. It's doing another one. No, you're not supposed to do another one. I'm going to hide behind the tree on this one. Like I said, tight in. You're going to see one hit me because I'm not tight in. They don't actually do too much damage, but if all of them hit you, they probably will kill you. I'm pretty certain it will actually. So just bear with me. We'll have this thing down any day now. You don't. Yeah, you just can't go in with the sword on these things. Because we do have the bleed effect on the sword, it would help bring the uh, do the damage quite quickly. There we go. Get rid of the little ones. Final one, there we go, and then that's why we are here, the, the chair there. Now I suppose you could run in and grab it if you really wanted to, but uh, you might as well take your time and kill that thing. Three smithing stone threes. Now I'll just show you, if you do walk into your own waypoint, uh, they do disappear. Uh, now there is another group, I remember there being another group of um, around some chairs around here, and it's more smithing stones. I will get them late. I think it might be off to the side there. But I couldn't see any... No, I couldn't see any... Uh, white items or anything. So rather than messing around and getting lost and everything, we don't need it. I didn't pick them up in my, my research run. So it's fine. I do remember them from my first run, though. We definitely don't have to go and get them, so don't worry about that. But there are some more up there somewhere. <laughs> I do remember them being some... So, yeah, we, if we do need them, we'll come back. I don't think we do. Anyway, teleport back to this uh, this grace point here, and then uh, we're going to ride around this area here. So there's, you're going to look out for a broken bridge. 
and that's uh, we don't go too far left there are lobsters there so watch out uh, look for the, the buildings the collapsed buildings uh, and look for the collapsed bridge which is that thing ahead of me there and there's going to be a golden seed so basically all we're doing is I'm making our way around this early part of the lakes and getting into that place ahead of us there Rhea Lucaria and that's going to be the next video so golden seed nice easy one it's nice when they're easy like that and then we're going to go all the way around the left hand side the west side of the castle Rhea Lucaria to these ruins here this group here so that's the ride I'm about to do I will show you where we are when we get there but uh, just keep it on your right hand side the whole way around and you'll be fine this is quite the ride and there are quite a few of those large plants that fire the tracking spell so you can either try and outrun it or quickly dodge behind something to avoid them so there is one off to the right here there are some gravestones there as well you know the ones that have the, the runes in them so if you want to take your time and, and you know kill that plant and get them and go for it there is another one to the left now and there's one dead ahead obviously now I can hear it's been casting them behind me that one's reaching up as well you can see how many there are I'm just going to quickly run and hide in here for a moment yeah all hell's breaking loose out there And then you've got smithing stone two times three. You shouldn't need any more of those. But uh, if you want to move on a, a upgrade, uh, another weapon, then maybe you will use them. I'm going to keep these a wide berth. Still got the the rail lacaria on my on my right hand side. And then when you see these this big rock formation here, I'm about to ride underneath. You know you're nearly there. Uh, we're getting the Academy Glintstone key, so it's the key to get into the, the Academy, the Rhea Lucaria. Right, so I'll just stop here and show you where I am. I don't know why I got off the horse, but there you go. So this is where we're heading here. Uh, there is a dragon. The reason I'm not showing you while we're there is that there is a dragon that is sleeping. And we are going to quickly pick up the key and run. So uh, yeah, you're going to want to do the same as well. And we're going to head off to the right hand side of me there after we've got it. So quickly run. Don't try and fight this thing. It's a magic dragon so we're not particularly strong against it. But the furthest item. There are three items. I haven't marked the Kukris because. Okay we're not going to use them. Uh, but yeah the most important thing out there is the Glintstone Key. It's the furthest one. It's the purple one. So as long as you pick that, that up. That's all you need. Uh, I mean if you die at this point. As long as you don't have too many runes. It's fine. Don't bother going back. Just ride over this side if you if you didn't die, and uh, and get this. And once you get to this area, the uh, the dragon will de-aggro and leave you alone. And now we can uh, warp from here. So this is where we were. This is where I am now. On the other side of the lake, there is more lake. There's a lot more lake, <laughs> or oh, the side areas anyway. So now we're going to go back to the the Lascar Lace Lascar ruins, something like that. This is one of the first grace points that we activated. This is a shortcut, the Lask Laskar ruins. Let's go with that. Uh, right, do not run into these ruins. You know, I, in the previous video, I said that we had an enemy, but it wasn't the worst. The en enemy we're about to encounter is the worst one in the game. I. I hate them. I really hate them. They're horrible. So slowly kill these smaller ones first. So you're going to see them appear out the floor. So if you make your way around the left hand side while giving a wide berth to that kind of monument in the middle, you're going to see the smaller ones appear. These do a horrible tracking spell that you want to you want to get rid of them because you don't want to have them doing it while you're fighting the bigger one. Now I got extremely lucky in this video and the enemy that I hate did not aggro did not aggro at all it just sat there so I'm slowly moving so maybe if you come at it from this side it won't aggro for you as well but they are extremely quick uh, they teleport through the ground they do poison attacks just get it killed as quickly as possible that's why the summon is here it's literally just to deal with that thing and take its attention but be aware of where it is at all times and it will drop a ghost Glove War 2 for you as well. Right. We're nearly done with this one. We've got a few. There's one of the tracking. They track really, really quick. 
Having loads of those guys fire those things off while you're trying to fight the big thing is not fun. So we'll kill them all. <laughs> and uh, you can, interestingly, you can backstab them, which is fun. Yeah, you're not really much help over there, are you? I've already killed it. Uh, ritual pot, if you're into crafting those items. And then a smithing stone three, which we will potentially need. Uh, well, we'll definitely need, but I'm not sure how many we have at this point. Quite a few. Uh, and then this is the main reason we're here. So use this teleport, and it's going to give us, take us to the gates of Rhea Lucaria. We already have the key, so we can go straight in at this point. There is a grace here. And then this thing we actually pick up here is called the Meeting Place Map. Uh, is the map that shows you where the key is. But obviously we already have that, so we don't need... Uh, don't need that. So if you walk slowly forward, you'll see examining the seal. You can actually go too far forward and it'll, the prompt will disappear. And then uh, you're going to go through the seal. And it's going to bring you into the, the main area. So this is where we will start off in the, the next video. This is where we are now. So I've gone from that side round to the other side. Uh, I'm just going to grab a couple of extra things before we finish up here. So there is a nice easy golden seed over here. Just watch out for the drop. So there is actually another uh, gate, uh, like a magic seal, on the opposite side where we are now that will take you across, all the way to, across to the other side. We will use it at some point to get to the other side, but uh, we don't need to go there yet, so we won't. That's where we're heading. I mean, that's pretty cool looking, isn't it, to be honest? <laughs> Yeah, so if you touch that seal from the other side, it actually takes you through a teleport. Now we're just going to go and buy uh, a couple of things from a merchant that's hidden down here. One of them may be pretty obvious. It's stone sword keys. We're just going to get two. We've got a few runes lying about, so I'll grab them. There are a lot of wolves here, by the way, so use the old uh, lock-on trick to figure out where they are and uh, kill them all. They should just be able to one-shot them at this point. There are lots, so keep locking on and uh, moving it around so you can kind of figure out where they are. I think I have just walked past one. I think there's one to my left. I think it's this part where it happens. Uh, no, I've got the swirl. It must be further down. I do miss one. One comes out from the left-hand side. Where is it? Let's see if I can spot it. It's probably really obvious as well. Still can't see. Ah, there it is. How did I not see that? I was concentrating ahead of me. There he is. Nearly kills me. Fun times. I managed to do that boss at the beginning without even getting hit, but then <laughs> the wolf is the thing that nearly kills me. Yeah, so keep going. There will be a white wolf. When you get to the white wolf and killed his followers, that is the end of them. So obviously he's going to take a bit more, a bit stronger. There's three round him, and I think there's a couple. There's actually two round this side of the tree as well. Yeah, one more. And then at the end there is a merchant. So of course when you get the swirls you're clear. Yeah, so the stone sword key is obvious purchase. We'd need those. Uh, so we just want to top up and grab a couple. He does have three, but I just picked two up. Um, we can always come back if we need them. But one of the, the main thing we're here for is actually the fanged imp ashes. We will, It's a lot later on we're going to use them. But there's a, one of the towers you know, we, where we had to kill the three spell tortoise, the spirit tortoises. Uh, one of the ways you open one of these towers is by making imps fight each other. So we, have, if we have these these ashes, these imp ashes, we can just uh, make them fight the enemy imps that are there, and the tower will open. There are a few ways you can make imps fight each other. This is the easiest way to do it. So uh, yeah, just grab those for now. It's going to be a while before we use them, but uh, you should have more than enough runes to uh, to get them. And then we're going to use the golden seeds that we've got. So we are up again. Uh, I'm actually going to keep it... Do I keep it 3 to 6? I do keep it 3 to 6. Okay, right. Rhea Lacaria next. So thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.